So, today we are going to discuss spinning geometry. The first question that comes to our mind is what is spinning geometry? Now, if I if you see the diagram on the right hand side, you can see the thread path from the drafting system to the bobbin is shown. And if we look at this thread path, what we see that the as the yarn path is deflected at different points. The yarn comes into contact with the lappet guide at the point R. It comes into contact with the balloon control ring that is the point S in the diagram and also comes into contact with the traveler that is the T. And if you look at this, all these parts are arranged at various angles and the distances relative to one another giving varying deflection to the yarn. This set of dimensions, the leading angles together is known as spinning geometry. So, the geometrical path that the yarn is going to follow because of the locations of lappet guide, location of the front roller nip, location of the balloon control ring and the ring and traveler combinations, all these together defines the spinning geometry. This geometry is very, very important and that is what we are going to discuss now. Let us go to the next slide. In this slide, on the left hand side, you look at the symbols and then try to locate those symbols on the right hand side of the diagram and try to understand what these symbols means and what these symbols are going to indicate. Like the angle alpha, this is the inclination angle of the drafting rollers. Okay. Then angle gamma, this is the inclination of the yarn in the spinning zone with respect to spindle axis. Then the angle delta is inclination of the leg of a yarn balloon to the spindle axis. Then there are dimensions like L G, L B, L H. These dimensions are also shown in the diagram. Besides D H, D R, these are the diameters. So, D R indicating the diameter of the ring, D H outside diameter of the cop that is the bobbin, L F is shown here in the diagram is the distance of the thread guide from the spindle or the tube upper edge. Then the length of the spindle is shown by L s, this is L s here. So, all these dimensions are indicated and the symbols are also given. We move on from this slide to the next influence of spinning geometry it influences spinning tension, number of end breaks, the number of times the thread is going to break. It also affects the irregularity of the yarn that is basically mass irregularity. It can affect the hairiness part of the yarn and it can also affect the generation of fly. So, so many factors are there and all of them gets affected by the spinning geometry. Now, what is spinning triangle? Spinning triangle is shown on the right hand side of the diagram. You can see here that here is the spinning triangle, this part and you look at the two front rollers which are one on the top of the other and the yarn is moving out from the nip of the rollers and then it is moving downwards. So, you see the part of the yarn as it moves out of the or the drafted fleece that moves out of the nip 
they are actually in contact with the with the bottom roller surface it is following the a curved path and the fibers are actually pressed against the surface of the bottom roller now twist that we generate in the balloon zone travels towards the front roller nape we have to remember that the twist is generated in the balloon every revolution of the yarn balloon insert one twist or generate one twist and the twist as it accumulates in the balloon then starts flowing towards the front loader nip so the twist should flow as close to the nip as possible then only the possibilities of breakage will be reduced generally what happens the twist never reaches the nip line as fibers deflect and follow a curved path after leaving the nip line they also remain pressed against the surface of the bottom roller and therefore the torque that is available in the yarn does not flow right up to the nip that is at this point and hence we get a triangular array of fibers in front of the nip and this array of fibers remains untwisted and we all know that twist and strength go together in the case of spun yarns the more the twist the more is the strength however you will come to know later that if we go beyond the optimum twist optimum twist the strength may fall but here there is a part of yarn which remains untwisted because the twist can't flow there and therefore this is vulnerable to breakage so we are very much concerned about the size of the spinning triangle it is how to reduce the size if size is reduced then possibilities of end breakage during spinning will go down because in the entire thread path from front roller nip to the bobbin this is the zone where the fibers are untwisted and therefore it is most weak and hence there is every possibility that the thread may break here while spinning is going on so as i have already told that being devoid of twist spinning triangle is the weakest place in the yarn path yarn is also under tension while it is being spun and the tension is also transmitted up to the nip point without much hindrance and therefore most of the breakage possibility is in the spinning triangle zone because fibers are under tension but they are untwisted therefore spinning may become impossible if we do not take care of the size of the spinning triangle and we will see how the size of spinning triangle can be manipulated with the geometry of the spinning zone now the triangle can have two dimensions one length dimensions and the other is width dimensions if we look at this diagram as shown here the length of the spinning triangle decides the length of the weak zone obviously longer the length the longer of the length of the weak zone and therefore possibilities of breakage will be more the length of the spinning triangle depends upon spinning geometry and the level of twist that we insert into the yarn now short triangle would mean small weak zone and therefore small breakage so we have to always keep thinking how to reduce the size of this spinning triangle now though you will see that twist level can change the size but twist is decided by the by the demand imposed on the quality of the yarn or the kind of product that you are going to make from this yarn therefore twist cannot be used as a means to change the size 
of the spinning triangle. Now, two small a spinning triangle let us imagine. In that case, what will happen? The edge fibers as shown in the diagram, the orange fibers are the edge fibers. Two small spinning triangle basically means edge fibers have to deflect a lot before they get bound into the yarn. Let us say the fiber placed at the center here as shown by this line. It has to it is not bending at all. This fiber is not bending at all. As it is flowing from the drafting zone, it is going straight and arriving at the apex point of the spinning triangle. Whereas, the fibers which are at the edges, all of them have to turn. So, so the, this fiber, all these fibers are actually turning a bit and they are approaching the apex of this twist triangle. So, and therefore, the fiber at the center is not turning at all, its turning angle is 0, whereas the fibers which are away from the center point, they are turning more and more and the fibers which are at the edge, at the right hand edge and left hand edge they have to turn maximum. Now, this turning may be difficult for some fibers and some fibers therefore, may fail to turn as shown in the diagram that these orange lines are some fibers which are escaping the twisting action because they are not turning due to some reasons. And if these fibers fail to turn and therefore, get integrated into the structure of the yarn, these fibers, these fibers will be behaving like flies. They will only, they will move out of the nip line and they are not integrated into the yarn structure and hence they will start floating. And when they start floating, they will try to gradually settle down on the machine. That means, they may settle on the traveler accumulate there and that may increase the friction between traveler and the ring. Sometimes they may settle on the balloon and thereby they become a nap in the final yarn and some of them may settle down on the floor and they will contaminate the surroundings as well as the machine. So, fly liberation because these fibers are escaping twisting action is a source of problem for us. We have to think how to reduce the fly liberation and therefore, if the spinning triangle becomes smaller and smaller, let us say if I show it in the diagram that if this point shifts from here to there, then this fiber has to turn by a larger angle and hence possibilities of escaping twisting action will be more. If we insert more twist and thereby try to reduce the length of the spinning triangle. Okay? And the next point is if the spinning triangle is too long, the other extreme if we go for a long spinning triangle, there will be long weak place and the long weak place means possibilities of breakage will increase. However, the edge fibers are better bound into the structure in this case because they will not turn too much as it is expected in the case of spinning triangle which is shorter in terms of length. So, therefore, we understand that is why the triangles neither should be too small nor should be too large. Now, look at this particular slide where we are trying to analyze the importance of the inclination angle of the drafting system and 
is the location of the lappet on the size of the spinning triangle. As we said that though twist can be used as a means to change the spinning triangle size, but this, this particular option will not be able to exercise because twist is going to depend on some other factors and which are not which, which is not connected to the you know, to the machine and its operations. It is mainly decided by the product quality. So, different products may need different kind of twist, warp yarn needs some amount of some particular level of twist factor, waved yarns will need some other twist factor, hosier yarns will need some other twist factor. So, the twist that we keep depends upon what type of yarn quality we want to produce. Okay. Now, look at this. Now, along the arc A B, along the arc A B, look at the arc A B in the diagram, the drafted fleece of fibers is tightly pressed against the bottom roller surface, because it is in contact with the steel roller and it is pressed against the steel roller. So, therefore, there is a lot of friction between the fibers and the roller surface. And because of the friction, the, it becomes difficult for the torque to twist these fibers and hence they, they do not get twisted. Now, this length is L 1 as shown in this diagram, it is L 1. Now, zone L 2 to L 1 the spinning triangle forms and the fleece width M is transformed into a yarn. Now, this is the spinning triangle shown here, M is the width, L 2 is the part which is in somewhere here. Let us say the apex point which I show it here, it could be somewhere there. So, that means L 1 part is basically which it looks like a rectangle here is in contact with the bottom roller surface and L 2 part is actually the triangle area and M is the width of the free drafted fleece of fibers and this drafted fleece of fibers we can also control by having floating condensers. So, zone L 2 is most weak as sufficient twist is not there and there is no support to it. So, most of the yarn that will break in the zone L 2. Now, size of zone L 2 to L 1. If I look at this diagram, then we can say that angle alpha, what is angle alpha? Alpha angle alpha is this angle this angle is indicating basically the inclination angle of the drafting zone or drafting system. This angle alpha and angle alpha 1 as shown in the diagram are basically same and angle psi, this is the angle here, angle psi, this is equal to angle psi 1 which is here these two are same and the proof is given in the slide also. You can go through this proof, it is very easy to understand. Why I am doing this? Because we need to know what is the angle A O B, this angle we are interested to know, because this angle can give us the length L 1, that is what is the length L 1, that we will come to know. If we know the angle A O B, the angle A O B which is represented by angle beta is basically the difference between what? Difference between this entire angle S O T which is psi 1 minus angle S O Q which is alpha 1. So, angle beta is basically the difference between 
psi 1 minus alpha 1 or psi minus alpha, where psi indicates the angle that the yarn makes when it comes into contact with the lappet guide with respect to a horizontal line as shown in the diagram and alpha which is equal to alpha 1 indicates the inclination of the drafting system. And therefore, how much is L 1? L 1 is basically R k b. So, R k b is always R into beta, where beta is in radian. So, R is d f r by 2 that is diameter of front roller divided by 2 that is the radius of it and beta is what psi minus alpha by 180 and therefore, it becomes d f r psi minus alpha by 360. I think, I think there is one some pi is missing here because we know that 180 degree basically means how many pi? 1 pi. Is that correct? So, 1 degree is pi by 180 radian and therefore, if I say psi minus alpha is how many radian? It is pi by 180 into psi minus alpha. So, therefore, what we should have? We should have here 1 pi which is missing in this equation. So, that pi should come here, we should write pi here and that completes this equation, the pi was missing. All right. So, this is now L 1 part therefore, depends upon diameter of the bottom roller and it depends upon the inclination angle of the drafting system and also it depends upon the location of the lappet guide. From there we go to the next slide, we write pi here also, this is missing. So, now what happens if we change the angle alpha? That means, I am making the drafting system more and more, suppose we are making it more and more vertical. So, angle alpha has to increase. If we increase angle alpha, then what happens to L 1? As we increase alpha, psi minus alpha is going to decrease. The numerator is going to decrease and therefore, L 1 is going to decrease. That means, this L 1 part, this part will be less and less if the drafting system is made more and more vertical. So, there is an advantage in making the drafting system more and more vertical because it will reduce the L 1 value, but the only negative point is the overall height of the machine is going to increase as we try to incline the drafting system more and more. Usually, it is inclined around 45 to 60 degree. The other thing is angle beta can decrease with reduction of angle psi. Now, if this angle psi, we are now let us discuss if this angle psi, how it can change? This all depends upon the location of the lappet, this lappet. If I move the location from C to D towards D, that means, I am moving it away from the machine frame. Then also what is going to happen? If psi decreases, that will cause psi to decrease and as a result the numerator of equation 3 is going to decrease and that will also decrease L 1. So, it is also going to help, but the negative aspect of it that it is going to increase the overall width of the frame. Therefore, there has to be a limit that the how far the lappet location can be shifted from the front face of the machine 
and what should be the inclination angle of the drafting system. So, neither too far nor too close and different machine, machine manufacturers have found out you what is the right kind of you know, this uh, angle alpha and angle psi and they have designed the machines accordingly. Now, inclination of the drafting system again we are discussing here the lower drafting angle, larger angle of deflection that is this angle of fibers on the bottom drafting rollers and it results in long spinning triangle. Spinning triangle will be very, very long in that case. At the long spinning triangle, what is going to happen? That the fly liberation may reduce, but end breaks may increase because the, the length of the wick zone or wick place is going to increase. And stiffer angle means small deflection as shown here and therefore, the optimum angle we keep around 45 to 60 degree. So, some machine manufacturers have kept it 45 degree, someone has kept it 60 degree, in this it may vary. The other thing is roller overhang, through this also there is a possibility to change the size of the spinning triangle. The top roller never sits vertically above the corresponding bottom roller. Now, here we are showing the top and the bottom roller. This is the front bottom roller of the drafting system. This is the top front roller of the drafting system. So, both are the front rollers, but one is bottom, the other one is top. And if we see their locations, they are the center line of the two rollers are not matching each other. The, the line that goes to the axis of the top roll is little ahead of the line which is passing through the axis of the bottom roll and it is what is known as roller overhang. The top front roller is offset by 2 to 4 mm typically this is what is the roller offset with respect to the bottom roller and it gives what smooth running because the pressure on it exerts a stabilizing component in running directions. So, that the swinging of the top roller is avoided and the angle of wrap is also reduced because by doing so the length L 1 can be reduced. So, that is the advantage we get but too much overhang increases the distance between the opening of the uprounds and the nape line. So, if I increase this too much from here, if I try to bring it here, this distance is also important for us because this is the zone where the fibers are not under control of uprounds. So, if this zone length becomes too high, then there are possibilities that fibers during drafting operation may form drafting irregularity, especially the shorter length fibers. And therefore, too much overhang is not practiced, it is usually kept between 2 to 4 mm. Now, angle of wrap around the thread guide, another interesting thing is as shown in the right hand side of the diagram, the angle of wrap around the thread guide. This is the lappet guide. A lappet guide is nothing, but is basically a loop of wire and the loop of wire, the yarn is made to pass through this loop of wire and we call it a guide for the, for the yarn. So, the inclination angle theta as shown in the diagram usually varies between 15 to 30 degree and the wrap angle delta is 0 to 50 degree. That means, wrap angle keeps on varying, is not fixed. The variability of inclination angle theta is due to up and down movement of the lappets, balloon control ring and the ring rail. See, theta keeps on changing because 
the lappet is also moved in the modeling frames, they are not fixed. And the lappet keeps moving, this angle is going to change. Suppose the lappet goes from here to there, and this angle is going to change now if it is here. Or if it comes back here somewhere, then this angle is going to change. So, the angle theta will change depending upon where the lappet is located in terms of its vertical locations not that means the location along the y axis or one can say z axis, but not along the x axis that is what is important. And uh, the angle delta this angle is also changing continuously because why due to movement of the balloon yarn towards and away from the machine. See the balloon yarn is sometimes going this side as shown here. In that case, the angle is quite, the deflection is quite high. When it goes to the other side, the other extreme, this is as if the cross-sectional view of the balloon. Then we can say in that case, this angle is almost close to 0. That means, as the balloon turns, you have to remember now very carefully, this point is very important. As the balloon turns continuously, the yarn is not in contact with the lappet always the deflection angle of the yarn around the lappet continually changes in each and every cycle. It varies between 0 to 50 degree as given in this case and therefore, when it is 0 degree, there is no resistance to the flow of torque. The twist can easily flow because there is, a, there is no resistance offered by the frictional contact point and the lappet guide. But when it is going to the other extreme side, then because of the wrapping angle and the friction, there is a resistance to the flow of torque or there is the flow of twist. That means, for every revolution, there is opportunity for the twist to flow right up to the nip and at the same time, a situation will occur when twist flow will be resisted. This is what is continuously happening when the, we are spinning the yarn. Roll of thread guide and the angle of wrap. Thread guide therefore, restricts the flow of twist always because any frictional contact will always resist the flow of twist. Transmission of tension to the spinning zone that is also affected by this because when the tension also gets transmitted and that also is affected by any frictional contact between the yarn and any metallic surface of the machine. So, restricting the tension transmission is beneficial as it will reduce the end breaks. If the tension which is transmitted right up to the spinning zone where the yarns or fibers are getting you no know, transformed into yarn that is up to the almost to the spinning triangle. If there is a restriction to the transmission of tension, then in a way it is good because all the tension is not reaching the spinning triangle. So, therefore, end breakage we may expect to go down. However, restricting twist flow means less twist in the most vulnerable part of the newly formed yarn. That is another point. So, there is a in a way when there is a large angle of wrap around the lappet guide, the twist flow is less, but the tension that is transmitted is also less. And in the other extreme, when you go when the wrapping angle around the thread guide is minimum, the twist flow is more, but the tension that also goes transmitted is also more. Therefore, in one extreme, tension transmission is less, twist flow is less. The other extreme, tension transmission is maximum and the twist flow is also maximum. And in these two situations, what is going to be the net effect 
on the end package that what has to actually no study by doing experiments because if we feel that tension transmission is less and therefore end package will be less we may not be very sure because twist transmission also will be less that time so in that case the yarn in the spinning zone may be a little weaker so what is going to be net effect we cannot say in advance or we cannot really anticipate the thread guide also exerts breaking effect to the tension peaks generated due to rotation of the balloon. See, when the balloon rotates at a very high speed, tension peaks develops. So many forces acts on the balloon and the traveler, there will be always some tension peaks. And the tension peaks is a source of end breakage because sudden rise in tension if it is transmitted up to the spinning triangle then it is a kind of shock the fibers in the spinning triangle is going to experience and therefore it may break. So the thread guide is there in a way to absorb these impacts and vibration arising due to traveler rotations and air turbulence. So, this thread guide which is here is acting as a shock absorbing medium. So, many shocks are not transmitted fully to the spinning zone or to the spinning triangle. A small angle of lab means more twist transmission in spinning triangle and fewer breaks but also high tension at the weak point. So, as I said this has been already pointed out that when the angle of wrap is less that means the contact area between the thread and the thread guide is less, twist transmission will be more but tension transmission also will be more. So, what is going to net effect? as I said it is very uncertain we cannot predict. Now comes balloon height. We need to produce the largest possible package. This is what because we want that the larger the package size the frequency of doffing is going to reduce and therefore productivity of the machine can be increased. The yarn content on the package depends upon the cough height and therefore we always try to increase the cough height. However, this can be varied within very limited limits. The length must follow the appropriate ratio to the ring diameter. So, ring diameter and the length of the package are related and length of the package in turn is decided also by the balloon height because the package always remains within the balloon. So, balloon should be large enough in terms of length and in terms of diameter to accommodate the package within it. Now, the cup height to ring diameter is around 4.4 to 5 this is the ratio that is bobbin height to ring diameter and the bobbin diameter to ring diameter this ratio is 0 0.45 to 0 0.5. So, these ratios have been decided based on lot of experiments then only we are depending upon the it depends upon the kind of yarn we are spinning and uh, the strength of the yarn all these things will have an impact on the, the uh, bobbin and ring diameter ratios, but to ensure that there is a stable spinning operation, a stable spinning operation basically means that we will not encounter too many breaks. So, the spinning is basically commercially viable. In that case, the ratio of bobbin diameter ring diameter is 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 
and the bobbin height turing diameter ratio uh, is around 4.4 to 5 times. That means, the roughly we can say that the bobbin height or bobbin length should be 5 times the ring diameter at the most. Tall balloons means too much of tension difference. Suppose you want to make a very long package. So, idea is to accommodate more yarn to make the cup heavy. So, you need a tall balloon to be formed also in that case. So, tall balloon means too much tension difference while winding at the base and at the tip of the cup because being that the length being too large while we are winding or while we are going for base building or while winding at the bottom of the you know, bobbin and while winding at the top, these differences are too large. Therefore, what can happen? The balloon becomes unstable and it can collapse. That possibility is there, the balloon can collapse. That is, balloon will form a node in between and the node is will come into contact with the, with the bobbin. And if it node comes into contact with the bobbin, then there is going to be a rubbing action between the yarn and the surface of the bobbin and it will lead to breakage of the yarn. Now, in such cases, the solution that has been found out is to have balloon control ring. This is what is going to help us and that is why we have balloon control rings wherever we want to go for larger package. We will discuss about the balloon control ring and how does it help to have uh, a large balloon to be formed. But the negative aspect is that the yarn rubs against the balloon control ring. Balloon control ring is a ring and it is a metallic piece of you know, wire which may be polished also, but there is continuous rubbing action between the control ring and the yarn. And because of this continuous rubbing action, the yarn is going to be roughened. That is, fibers from the surface of the yarn may come out and we may get a hairy yarn because it will try to pluck out fibers from the surface of the yarn because of the rubbing, continuous rubbing actions between the yarn and the balloon control ring. So, that is the, but this is the solution, but solution also has its own implications. With that, we close this particular session and thank you. Thank you.